Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? My name's Tony. I gotta lose weight. This is my vlog. It's chapter four of the power of habit. All right, so uh, they messed me up this time. They did not give me like a summary paragraph at the end. So I guess I have to do the work myself and I have to come up with my own summary. But uh, yeah, the big nugget is the chapter title. It is The Key Habits or The Ballad of Paul O'Neill. Uh, just, just a quick summary of the chapter. This chapter follows primarily the workings of Paul O'Neill with the company Alcoa and how he uh, kind of landed on one significant thing to change the culture at Alcoa. And he found that by focusing on safety, which is almost something that everybody in the organization could agree on, that he was able to uh, affect change in a lot of different habits. And the end result is this concept of a keystone habit. There, there are habits that produce change in other habits. And it's an interesting concept to me because... Uh, it's it's about focusing on small wins. It's about finding the one thing that you can change that will have a ripple effect and cause change in a lot of other things. Uh, they do bring it back around to weight loss, which is good for us. They talk about Michael Phelps. And I tell you what, the big takeaway I had from Michael Phelps is that I guess like if you if you isolate Michael Phelps, you think that like his main thought process is to win his swimming match. But really, what we found out is that his coach from at a young age instilled habits into him that he did every day uh, as routine, and that he treated each one of those habits as a, uh, a match almost, something that you could get victory on. So say, say he had a match at 9 o'clock, and he had to do 10 things consistently before he got to that match. Well, he counted each one of those as a win. So the match just became another thing in a series of wins that he was already experiencing. So if he did his warm-ups correctly, that's a victory. If he had his breakfast correctly, that was a victory. If he was able to calm his mind by doing the things that he did on a daily basis, the, the match just became another extension of his habits, and he was already ready to win. Uh, the other interesting thing that Phelps did is that he would visualize his best race. This is a technique that his coach taught him. And so for those moments where he was actually in the race, he already had a plan of what his best race would look like, and he was really just trying to emulate that in his mind almost automatically because he thought about it so much. It, it just became an extension of his process. They give a great example of when he broke one of the world records he had goggle failure during his race, but prior to that race that was on the line where the gold medal was on the line, he'd actually practice swimming in the dark. Uh, he had visualized what it would mean to swim a race without goggles, uh, you know, where he had goggle failure. And so he was really mentally prepared and it just came, it came through doing the same things consistently he just felt like he was going to win because he had a series of wins even getting into that race. And not just swimming races, just the fact that he was able to complete his habit. The reason I'm holding on to that Michael Phelps thing is uh, I do like this idea. I think for us, we think that losing weight is the win, but it could be... It could be a lot of little wins where the end result is losing weight. So if we form a habit around exercise, for example, uh, and we complete it like we exercise on Wednesday, that's a win. And the result of that might be the losing of the weight. Or they talked about a study that they did where they told people to write down what they were eating just one day a week uh, to do a food journal and how that basic keystone habit of just executing writing down your food one day a week for many people in the study became a daily habit and then they would transform how they used that list to plan meals and it really people who journaled their food like of these 1600 people lost weight more consistently than people who did not journal their food and so journaling the food is part of the win the end result would be the weight loss, but it's, you know, it's not like there's just one event that you have to win. And I think that's what the takeaway is for this keystone habit idea. 
If you can find a habit that will transform other things in your life, then you can start stacking small wins on top of each other. And then those things come together often in a way that you don't understand uh, to come up with a bigger win, to, to achieve a bigger goal. And that's really what the chapter is about. It's a great chapter. I would, I would recommend reading it. Let me see if I can pull out a quote or two. I do like this one on page 100, talking about uh, O'Neill at Alcoa. I knew I had to transform Alcoa, O'Neill told me, but you can't order people to change. That's not how the brain works. So I decided I was going to start by focusing on just one thing. If I could start disrupting the habits around one thing, it would spread throughout the entire company. That's the other thing they talk about is trying to change too much at once. Uh, it's better to pick the one thing and execute that change, try to establish that new habit. And then if you can identify one of these uh, keystone habits, then the change will progress more naturally. So like exercise, I think food journaling, like these are the big takeaways, I think, for this journey that we're on. Uh, I've been doing pretty good, pretty consistent with exercise, but I haven't done anything like I haven't really made it like, ooh, this is a big thing in my life. I haven't looked at it as habit change. Honestly, I've looked at it as kind of a task on a checklist, like, oh, I have to exercise because I want to make a video or something like that. But I think I need to change my thinking around exercise and kind of tie it into this larger habit change. And then uh, again, with my food, I've just been willy nilly. Like I haven't really been paying attention to what I eat other than trying just to eat in the window. And I, I do like this idea of food journaling. So it might be something that I change, but they talk about people who uh, get an exercise habit, that there's a lot of positive things that come from that being more productive, uh, being more focused. And so uh, I think that exercise is definitely a keystone habit. The interesting thing about food journaling is just like an awareness of eating habits that would just automatically come by doing the process of journaling without really thinking about it. All of a sudden you start to notice when you're snacking or, and they were talking about people that they knew they ate at 10 o'clock or wanted a snack at 10 a.m. every day. So instead of, you know, running and getting something out of the vending machine, having fruit there. So there's a lot that we can do, but I, I think the takeaway for me is just for the next week for sure is just to pick one thing and kind of focus on it uh, and, and maybe treat it like a keystone habit. And that could be exercise. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Uh, I do want a food journal too, so I got I to gotta figure it out. But that's where I'm going to leave it today. What did you get out of chapter four? Do you food journal? Uh, what's some of your keystone habits? Is there something in your life that you changed that was that created a ripple effect uh, for other things in your life. I would love to hear those comments below. Uh, thanks everybody who worked out with me on Wednesday. We got through another week. We got to weigh in on Monday. Hope everybody is doing good. Have a great weekend. My name's Tony. I have to lose weight, and this is my vlog. And I'll see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.